Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome to a Halloween watch me work, sort of. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of conversation between me and my client to see how we came up with these now, so let's get started. This one, we like the ombre. Like I just, I feel like that would be good accent nails. Yeah, do like cool. a red ombre and then just like the blood splatter. This, I love that. And I, I think it's, I think it's cause it's shiny. That's the reason yeah. I like it. Okay, go back. Than this. Yeah, those are cool. Do you want like a long nail? Like, will it uh, drive you? Not know. this long. Like, yeah, maybe. Because we can make like your pinkies or a nail you don't use very often, like soup, like really long. double your length. Yeah. I think we should good. do one like okay. that. Will it drive you nuts though? I don't think so. I feel like this looks like a toe. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than my hand drawing. Oh my god. How do I do this? There's your base elements. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to turn it so it faces me. <laughs> okay, so let's make these your stilettos. Okay. And they're already like a pretty decent length, so. Yeah, so the other ones I just won't even touch, but those ones will do long. Yeah. Um, they're slasher now. Let's do it here. Okay. And I think I like the diagonal red and uh, green yeah. first and the straight. Okay. Ones, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that on this one. The nice thing about this is you can be messy with it. Yeah. I feel like you kind of need a wood nail on each end. Yeah, like that. Right. Right. It's glaring a bit. Oh, yeah. We can do that one. I'm going to put a green that matches that. Uh, let's do that on here. Can you text me that, please? Yeah. Okay, we've got your pointy, the Elm Street, the um, striped one, and then two wound nails. Your other ones could just be the ombres with blood. Yeah. My first step is to remove the Strassi crystals from her previous design. I do have a tutorial video up on this previous design, which I will put in the top right corner and a link in the description box below. But when I'm removing Swarovski crystals, I just use a pair of old nippers or nail clippers, and that works really well. As you can see, the Swarovski crystals hold really well. After I've removed her set, we decided that we were going to extend her pinky nail and make it into a pointy nail and a little bit longer than her other nails. So I'm using Fusion Sculpture to extend her nails here. The forms that I'm using are really, really old. They're from Swan Nails, which is Ugly Duckling's like really, really old name when they first kind of launched. Um, I still have a bunch of them, so I use them because I really, really like them. After I've built out that extension on her pinky, I'm just gonna go in with some clear base from Fusion on the rest of her nails. And then after that is cured, I'm gonna go in and shape her pointy nails on the pinky finger. I like to do this so I have a pretty solid foundation to work on when I'm applying my color gel. Um, but you, I don't really care if there's lumps and bumps in here though because essentially this is gonna be a chrome nail. So to me, it doesn't really matter if it's not like perfectly even. The silver base that I'm going to use is Light Elegance's Dew Drop. This came out in their fall collection and I have yet to use it on a client and I was really excited too because it looked like liquid like metal on the nails. Um, but as you guys can see here, because I didn't smoothly finish out her nail when I was filing it, there's definitely lumps and bumps in this silver. Again, I'm going to cover this nail with chrome so essentially I just kind of wanted to see how this product worked on nails and now I do know that if you're going to use it, make sure all your lumps and bumps are gone. But in all honesty, if I was going to use this as a solid color and not put chrome over top of it, I would probably do the sandwich technique versus just embedding. We decided that the background of the Elm Street nail would just be completely black so I'm going to use Light Elegance's black tie all over the pointer finger on her right hand. Now when I'm doing this tutorial, what I'm going to do is nail by nail. So when I work, I, as my client's hands are curing, I'd be working on the other hand and I just go back and forth. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to do it nail specific. That way it's a little bit easier for you guys to follow if you wanted to try any of these techniques. For the background of the wound nails, we're going to use Light Elegance's No Tan Lines, which is a see-through neutral type of gel. You guys see this a lot in my Halloween wor Watch Me Works type of videos because I like how see-through it is. You can definitely build it up if you need to, but it's a really nice clear nude color. So when I'm going to put wound or bloods or anything like that over top of it, it works really well to not take away from whatever is going to sit on top of it. Taking some of Light Elegance's Nibble My Neck, which is a great dark, rich kind of blood red, I'm going to do the stripes on her other pointer finger like Freddy Krueger's sweater. So I don't care if these are messy. I'm not going to worry about swiping lines or anything like that. 
and I wanted to use a dark green that would kind of coordinate with this and also look like his sweater too so I'm gonna use Ringmaster from Light Elegance which I thought would work really nice I'm gonna take some more of that no tan lines and put it right in the center of the nail and this is going to be like if his shirt was ripped open and all of his like blood and guts and stuff were coming out of it. I want to put the blood and guts over top of the no tan lines at the end. So I can see the vision at the end. Right now I'm just creating the base to get that vision. And every single time I switch colors, I am curing in between or else it's just going to all run together and be a giant mess. But I'm just not showing you guys the curing parts. And keep in mind that normally when I'd be doing this, I'd be working back and forth, back and forth on my client. This particular uh, video, I am just showing you nail by nail. I'm a thousand percent gonna butcher this name, but it is Johens, something like that. Basically, this is like a mixing palette and it's a bunch of sheets of paper that have kind of a plastic film on them that you can use in a lot of different ways in your studio. And I use it typically as a mixing palette or for my nail art glue when I'm doing Swarovski crystals. But I'm gonna use this for some black that I've mixed with some clear to just kind of outline the nude base that I have going on here. And this will make it look a little bit dirty, a little bit grungy, and again, will add a really nice base for the background of of my blood and guts I'm gonna put on here. <laughs> Jumping back to the nails that are gonna be the bloody ombre, on that same sheet of paper, I have mixed up some of that nibble my neck with some clear gel, and I'm just putting this at the tip of the nail. What I wanna do is make like a bloody ombre where it's blood at the tips and then it fades into that no tan lines, and to do this, I wanted it to be fairly concentrated at the tip uh, with the red, but at the same time, if it's see-through, it's a little bit easier to kind of get that ombre look. Now, I don't care if this is perfect because essentially I'm gonna be blowing blood all over this nail in the end, uh, which is what I really like about these type of concept nails is it doesn't overly matter if it's perfect because there's a lot of dimension and a lot of layers that are going to be added to it. One thing I did find though is after I cured that red and I'm going to go in with the no tan lines, um, the messier it was the kind of better it looked and the more realistic it looked as well. So I'm going in with the no tan lines and I'm fading it into the red here and then after that is cured I'm going to go back in with some more of that red, a little bit more concentrated and just kind of I don't know, kind of try to blend it out a little bit, make it a little bit more messy, and this way it'll look like it's almost see-through blood. I really like the effect that it came out of it. I'm also using a padding motion with my uh, brush, which I also found kind of blended it together, but also gave it some more dimension. I'm going to do the exact same technique on her thumbnails. So a more concentrated see-through blood type of red at the tip, faded it into some clear red, and then we're gonna go back and forth with the tan lines just to get the effect that I want. Um, what I found also worked really well is if you go back in with a little bit more of a concentrated red while it's still wet, it gives it like a messy, bloody type of look to it too. There's a lot you can do with this. Again, don't expect it to be perfect because I am totally gonna be making these look like blood splatter nails in the end. Uh, but I was having fun kind of getting a different type of base and I did this technique four times over the course of her whole entire nails and every single one of them looked different which I really liked about it. On her ring finger on her left hand, we're gonna go back in with some more of that no tan lines. We're just gonna put it all over. This is again gonna be a wound nail. Once this is cured, I'm gonna take some of the Apre Art inks and also some of the alcohol inks that you can get from Michaels because there's a, a few different nude type of ones that I like for doing um, like wound type of nails, like grungy type of nails. Uh, so I'm gonna use a combination of all of these different colors and I'm just gonna put it all over this nail after I've wiped the dispersion layer off and I'm gonna try and blend it out a little bit more and make it a little bit grungy. After I have all of my base gels done, all of my colors ready to go, I'm going to embed all of the nails using some of my Fusion SL Clear. After finished files, where we're gonna move into the art. We're gonna start with the chrome nail first on the pinkies. I'm gonna take some of Light Elegance's tack, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna fill in any of the file marks that I have going on this nail. I'm going to cure it for however long it says to do in your specific light. Then I'm gonna go in with some of my Wildflowers Metallic Top Coat. This is my favorite top coat to use with chrome. 
I'm gonna cure it for exactly 30 seconds in my specific light. Then I'm gonna take some of these sponges that you can get from Superstore. They are the Joe Fresh brand. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And I'm gonna take some silver chrome from Beamy Beauty Box and I'm gonna use it all over the nail. I'm just gonna rub it in. Now the reason that I like these specific sponges the best is because they are super smooth. So I will rub it in really, really, really hard and then I flip the sponge over and I rub it in a little bit more where there's nothing on it and I find this works so well. Once the chrome is done, I do like to get my clients to cure it in a little bit longer too and after it's cured, I'm gonna just brush off the remaining particles of the chrome. So we decided to mat this specific nail and before I go in with any of my watercolor painting, which is what I do for the line work here, um, I do wanna go in after the mat has cured and buff that nail out a little bit. I don't think I've mentioned this in a video about watercolor, but you don't wanna watercolor over top of a shiny surface, it just won't stick. So giving this nail a quick buff after I have matted it will give a nice base for me to do my watercolor painting on. So I'm gonna use the classic watercolor painting palette from Prima Marketing. I love this one. I also am using the confections plate as well. I'll leave links in the description box below um, because I didn't want the brown to be as dark as I was making it with the classics palette. So I did an in-between one and I'm using a really, really long striping brush to create this line down the middle of the nail. A tip if you want a perfectly straight or somewhat perfectly straight nail is to move your client's finger, not so much the brush. This will make the line a little bit more straight. This is where I ran into a little bit of trouble though is because I wanted the line to be a little bit darker and when I went in with the second coat, my brush kind of slipped at the end and kind of created like a weird tip so it wasn't a perfectly straight line. I decided to leave it though because I was actually okay with how it turned out. I also used a bunch of pictures as inspiration for these nail designs and I will leave in the description box below any of the accounts that I can follow on Instagram so you guys can go follow them too. We got a lot of the ideas from Pinterest as you can see but a lot of their socials are there too so I wanna make sure that I'm giving them a shout out as well. So uh, this specific picture that I am using and following for it had these brown lines on the outside as well to make it look more like a Freddy Krueger type of nail with his like long claws. So I decided to do some more of the brown watercolor paint to kind of create this look. I prefer using watercolor paint because I personally can paint a lot more smooth, a lot more even with it. You could definitely use acrylic paint and I know a lot of my fellow nail techs out there would prefer to use gel paints too. Taking some of the Ugly Duckling Stickets, we're just gonna stick on some of these gold beads and we decided to mat over top of this as well and then we thought that that would make the gold beads look a little bit more brass and it did. It worked really nicely but in hindsight, I would not matte this nail. If I was to do this nail again, I would totally do it shiny because I felt like it took away from the silver chrome when we matted it and I'm not I'm not sure if I liked it as much. Plus like the good thing about um, like spitting on your nails like this is you get like the chunks. Yeah, right? <laughs> like it looks more authentic. I agree. If you guys have watched any of my other Watch Me Works for these Halloween gory type of nails, then you know exactly what's coming. We're gonna do some realistic blood splatters and the best way to do that is to literally spit. Okay, maybe not spit, but we're gonna blow through a straw. So I'm gonna use these three colors from Sally Hansen Insta Dry, and these are the perfect combination for blood, I find. The Go Garnet is super, super dark. The Cine Snap is kind of a medium, and then the other red one works really well when they're all combined together. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip your straw into the nail polish. You wanna make sure that it's basically covered on the opening, so that way when you spit down and blow air down, it covers the nails and does like an actual splatter effect. Now I had a huge glob on this particular nail, so instead of like trying to work it out I just put my fingerprint in it to give it like a realistic fingerprint look and then did another layer of the blood splatter on top of it a few things if you're going to try this technique I like to do this technique before I do any of the other nails typically I should have probably done it before we did the pointy nail artwork too uh, because you're gonna get blood splatter everywhere so if it goes on the other nails it can easily be wiped off if you want or it can create like kind of a, a blood base for the other nails if it splatters onto them as well I also find it works best if you use a ton of polish so that you can really pick it up well with the straw and get the true like actual splatter look. Now there are stamping polish plates that you can use for this type of look as well. I find nothing looks as realistic as doing this actual technique. Now a lot of people might not be comfortable uh, with you like basically blowing air and spinning on their nails which I totally totally get so definitely lean towards those stamping plates if this is not the technique for you. This particular client really just wants the gory bloody looks and so she's a-okay with using this technique on her. Her. 
For the Elm Street nail, I'm 100% using this nail design as inspiration for it because I loved how it looked. I'm gonna go back to using my watercolor paints. We're gonna use a white, and we're also gonna use a little bit of a gray in here as well. So to blend it out, you're gonna use a sponge. Now you wanna use a sponge that has a little bit more texture than those uh, sponges that I shared previously. So a cheap makeup sponge works the best. This little tool that I'm using to kind of blend them out, I'm pretty sure I found this on Amazon. So if I can find another one, I will leave it in the description box below as well. It works great to hold on to the sponge though so that I can easily apply it where I want it. So once I have the white down, I'm gonna go in with some of this dark green to draw the sign and I'm gonna uh, mix up my own type of color for it because I wanted it a little bit darker than how it was coming off here. You are gonna use watercolors on top of like darker colors. It does take a little bit to build them up. So my recommendation is to wait until your first layer dries and then go back in with a second layer to build up that color a little bit more. I'm gonna use a gray here to do the sign post. And again, I don't really care if my lines are perfectly straight or anything because this is supposed to be kind of a spooky, uh, whimsical Halloween type of design. And to me, it, it looks a little bit better if it's a little bit grungy and not super, super perfect, but that's just my opinion on it. Um, so to do the Elm Street nail, I'm gonna use a, a finer watercolor brush to try and write on these nails. Frick, this was hard. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I really just do not like doing letters on the nails like this. But again, it's okay if it look, doesn't look perfect. At least that's what I'm telling myself for the letters. <laughs> To the wound nail. So your first step is to do your matte top gloss. I'm pretty sure I forgot to do this last year and I was kind of frustrated with myself when it came time to gloss it at the end. So after it is cured, I'm gonna remove that dispersion layer and then I'm gonna take some of the Wildflowers Lace Paste. I love using the lace paste because it is like really strong to use like it's it's flexible it's easy to move around but it's still super stiff so i like to take a spatula type of tool i believe this is just the end of the beanie uh gel brush mixing tool that they have and i'm going to use this to place it on the nail and then i'm gonna, also going to use it to kind of carve out the nail now to make it blend into the nail a little bit more i'm just going to do a pushing motion around the edges and this will make it blend into that gel that we have as our base layer and then when you cure it it'll stick to it you won't have to worry about the lace paste falling off or anything down the road. I'm going to do this type of technique on both of the wound nails that have the no tan lines as the base, as well as this sweater nail because I wanted it to look like, again, that we were ripping his shirt open and he had some wounds and guts and stuff kind of flying out of it. On the ring finger on her left hand, instead of doing one giant wound, I decided to do two smaller wounds. So just make sure you're taking like a really, really small chunk of that lace paste if you're gonna do this, because if you take a big one, then it's really hard to kind of make the two look a little bit better there. And also I do find if you're gonna do two small ones, it's kind of hard to build it up so it looks like really woundy. I felt like I had to do this in layers. So we're gonna do kind of a smooth layer at the base here, and then we're gonna go in and build it up later on. Going back to some of my art inks. This is what is going to give it that texture and that wound type of look. So I want to make sure that I'm using a dark brown as well as a light brown to create this, which is why I'm using some of the art inks that I you can get at Michael's as well, uh, because they have a darker brown that I thought would work really well. And to make it a little bit more runny, I'm going to spray some of the Apre um, blending fluid, and this is going to blend all of the dark and the light together, but also give it some more of that texture in between the dark and the light uh, look here. Because Freddy Krueger's skin is burnt, you want the wound nails to have kind of a burnt look to them. So I'm gonna take some of the blending fluid in a spray bottle and spray it on the nails. This is going to make the darker brown kind of sit on the higher peaks of the lace paste that we use. And this is gonna give it kind of a burnt look, which is exactly what I was going for. It's also gonna allow me to blend out some of that color a little bit more so that it doesn't just look like white anymore. After I have the look that I'm going for, I'm gonna take some of the Light Elegance No Tan Lines again, and I'm just gonna go in and cover up this wound so that it doesn't look so harsh. And again, we're making it look like it's a little bit layered, but the problem with doing this is I need to go back in and mat it at the end. And if I mat over top of this, it takes away a little bit of that dimension. So I think if I was to do this again, I just wouldn't use so much of the no tan lines. I would probably use a finer brush.
I want this entire nail to look matte except for the blood in the center to look shiny. So initially I put that down and then I realized that I do need to put matte over top of the no tan lines that I just added to seal it in. And I did lose some of the dimension doing this as well. So you guys are gonna see me try and fix that later down the road here. Um, if I was to do this again, I think I would just use a smaller br brush and just kind of dab the matte on to kind of seal it. And then that would bring back some of that texture and it wouldn't look as covered as it ends up looking. <laughs> I'm going to take a sponge and just kind of dab some of the blood around the wound too. This way it kind of looks like it's oozing out of it. I am gonna take some more of that nibble of my neck and just put blood in the center of all of the wounds on all of the different nails. Once I had all the blood added, I decided that I wanted to bring back some more of that dimension to the nail that I had originally created. So I'm gonna go back and do the exact same technique with the lace paste and then use uh, some more of the alcohol inks on top of it and then use some more of the no tan lines and then try and seal it all in because I thought that if I built it up a little bit more, it would look a little bit more realistic, it would look a little bit more grungy and it would feel really neat on my client's nails too. My ultimate goal with these wound nails is to make them look like they're burnt, like burnt flesh with like bright blood seeping out of them. So I'm hoping that we achieve that effect. When all was said and done, I think it looked really neat. And whenever you're gonna do some of these type of concept nails, it's all about the layers. If you look at a finished design and you have no idea how they created it, more than likely there's so much depth and dimension to get to the final layer, especially something 3D and especially something as intricate as this. My last step is to top gloss these nails. So I did take a finer brush and just kind of take some matte and top gloss over top of the wound like you guys can see here. And then I'm also gonna take some clear top gloss and just top gloss the blood in the center to make that kind of pop a bit more. Last step on top of that is to top gloss over top of the bloody nails. Uh, because this is nail polish, I wanted to do it relatively first in the nail design, and then that way it would have a long time to kind of sit before I top glossed it. If your nail polish is not completely dry before you top gloss over top of it, you can have cracking in the top gloss. Also on this thumbnail here, there was a big blob of nail polish that was just not gonna dry, so I decided to kind of mush it out and create some more texture on the nail instead. I am also using a matte top gloss for this entire nail design. This way it makes everything kind of pop out a little bit more and a little bit more grungy as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this slasher nail art themed tutorial. My client definitely wanted some Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger slasher themed nails and I'm glad that we were able to give that to her. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. Make sure that you're following me on all of my social media and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!